What does Christian live by? From the story of the Samaritan woman, John chapter 4. Fish grow on plankton or other small fish in the water, and cows grow on grass in the fields. And our body grows after eating milk and bread and food. I want to say everything that has life survives and grows by taking its food. Now, we learn that we are new creation in Jesus Christ. We are a new life in Jesus Christ. We also learn that unless we are born again, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, born again life is a new life, a living thing. Then, what kind of food does a Christian need to grow healthy? I mean, spiritually. For the birth and growth of Christian faith can be explained in three stages. And these three are similar to when a baby is born and raised. The first, new life should be born. The birth of a new life is the first stage. And then the baby needs to recognize her or his mom and seek her. And then baby needs to take food to grow. So these three stages are very similar in, in the growth of born-again soul. So we'll find how the Christian was born again and grow from the story of Samaritan woman of the last week. Actually, we, we uh, share the message from that story. The first stage is birth. Sin should be exposed and should be forgiven. Jesus tells the Samaritan woman about the living water, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and when the woman asks for the water, Jesus suddenly asks to bring her, her husband. John chapter 4, verse 16, He said to her, Go call your husband and come back here. The woman replied, I have no husband, Jesus said to her. Right you are when you said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the man you are living with now is not your husband. This you said truthfully. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. For this woman, she wanted to hide the most about her marriage life. This became a burden and a guilt in her heart. And also because of this, she hesitated to come to the Lord. So she didn't want to share, she didn't want to expose her pathetic story with a strange man. However, when Jesus heard her answer, she said, I had no husband. Jesus knew that she had ha have had five husbands. In fact, what she said was not quite true, but Jesus didn't rebuke her, saying, Why are you not honest? Instead, he accepted her, saying, You are right. She, uh, Jesus accepted her, as a friend or a conversation partner at least. So at here, the woman experienced an acceptance that she has never experienced from the world. One thing we should 
we, we need to note is that sin should be exposed or disclosed to be forgiven. Sometimes uh, people in this world behave to cover up or to find excuses whenever uh, their fault is disclosed. Let's say when Jesus point out her uh, marriage life, she could she could have excused herself as a divorce divorced victim so that she would actually be a, a godly person than anyone else thinks. However, she didn't do that way. She just admitted by silence. If we admit our sins and ask for forgiveness, we will experience an amazing grace of forgiveness. Once you have experienced forgiveness of sins, and you will live a life of forgiving, forgiving others, and asking for forgiveness for uh, your fault. You can check with you can check yourself with this, these questions. How often do you apologize to others? Let's say last week or last month. Do you say I am sorry and ask for forgiveness when you hurt someone? Or do you move move on a little by little? As a born again Christian, it is not that difficult to say I'm sorry. It is because that we have experienced the grace of the Lord already. We have room to be humiliated by saying I'm sorry. Now, when a new life is born, what is the next step? The first thing a baby does soon after, soon after the birth is to recognize its mother. Therefore, the second phase of newborn life is knowing Father and worship Him. But a time is coming and now is here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such people to be His worshippers. God is spirit and the people who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. A Samaritan woman wanted to worship God but because of guilt, she hesitated, or she didn't have confidence of acceptance before God. But after Jesus has accepted her as she was, now she has no obstacles in going to God. And that's why her question was, where well, is the place of true worship? Now, look at this notation here. The relationship with God is changed to the Father. As you experience acceptance of God and forgiving grace, you, you can go to your Father anytime. Do you hesitate? to come to God because what you have done. But if you trust the forgiving Father, no matter what you have done, good or bad, you can come to God and ask His correction, His, His uh, repairing or comforting or encouraging or maybe disciplining you. Anything he does for you should be from his love for you. So this is the coming to God is the most wise and blessful way. Now, if you know God, if you know the Father, your Father, then you will be proud of who God is. And you will be boast of even bragging 
you brag of being a Christian, the children of God. And you want to share, share the gospel with everyone you meet. This is the second stage of a born-again life. If you are not like this, still you hesitate to come to the Father and still you want to boast about the things in this world than God Himself, then I encourage you to go back to first stage and restore joy of salvation and the freedom and grace of forgiveness. Now, step three is a growth just like a baby grow up after eating mother's milk and food when you do God's work your soul will be satisfied and you will experience growth verse 28 then the woman left her water jar went off into the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Surely he can be the Messiah, can he? This woman came to the well to get water. However, after meeting Messiah, she was so happy and excited, and she left the water bucket, water jar, and went into the neighborhood whom she used to want to avoid but shared the gospel with them. Maybe some people mocked her at listening after listening to her. However, she was no longer afraid of such ridicules. It is because she experienced forgiveness and this gave her a room to tolerate any humiliating words. Just as food makes our bodies grow, the divine satisfaction makes our souls to grow. That's why Jesus said, verse 34, Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to complete his work. The one who reaps, receives pay and gathers fruit for eternal life, so that no one so that the one who sows and the one who reaps can rejoice together. For Jesus, the joy and satisfaction of doing God's work were much greater than the satisfaction from physical food. Have you ever experienced such a great satisfaction or joy more than food? When I was in college, I enjoyed to play a simulation, simulation game called Samgukji as a computer game. I was so into it that I remember playing games for more than 20 hours straight without eating nor sleeping. It was so fun. So I just skip eating and doing anything else, only playing games. I'm sorry, it's an, it's an unhealthy metaphor, but I tell you that the joy of doing God's work can be greater than any other pleasures in this world. So these days I pray that I want to realize great satisfaction through God's work like Jesus not from game. That's why Jesus said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by everything that comes from the mouth of God. This is how a born-again Christian lives, and this is a principle of Christian life. Our soul feeds on satisfaction. Where, would, where do you find the satisfaction? If you are a born-again Christian, I hope you find the joy in doing God's works. 
the joy from the Lord would be far greater than the joy of this world. For God is greater than the world. Let me close. What does a Christian live by? We remember Jesus coined the Christian life, a born again life. It's not a start over. It's not like reset of your life. It is new birth. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Don't listen to this lightly. There are three steps to becoming a Christian and growing up. Please check which day are you at. The birth. Birth of new life happens when you experience forgiveness of sins. And to be forgiven, the sin should be exposed, at least, or confessed, even better. If you experience forgiveness of sins, you live life of forgiveness. You would forgive others and ask others for uh, your for, for forgiving you. Once your sins are forgiven, if you don't, once your guilt is removed, that blocks you from God, then you will seek God. So, and then you will know Heavenly God, the Creator God is your Father, and you love God, you want to praise God, and you want to talk about God, and you will worship the Father, because He is your Father. And then step three will be, you're going to do Father's work. Because the satisfaction from doing Father's work, the joy in, in doing your mission will be far greater than anything, any pleasure from this world. Now I think it's clear how a Christian is born and growing. And I'm sure you understood why Jesus used the expression to be born again. I hope all of you will truly be born again and grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus.